welcome back to the Azure EDU Governance Series. This is video number three, and in this video we are going to discuss the Azure Enrollment Hierarchy uh, for Contoso Education. My name is Eric DeBoard. I'm an Azure TSP at Microsoft. I'm joined by Amy Manley and David Uoa, who are also Azure TSPs at Microsoft, and all of us focus in education. Okay, so we've been following along with Contoso. Uh, we've been uh, sort of discussing the different uh, options in Azure, the tools. Uh, and so Contoso's current state, as of this video, is they've purchased an Azure Monetary Commit. Uh, they've identified IT leaders who are going to govern their overall Azure deployments. Uh, and now they're ready to explore the enrollment hierarchy. Uh, and so this is where we start talking about specifics around overall Azure governance. So what is the enrollment hierarchy? Uh, the best way to think about this and probably the best way to depict it is with pictures. So we're going to actually do that. So you see here I've got the enterprise enrollment. That is where they are today because they got the Azure Monetary Commit. Uh, the decisions they need to make at this point is how they're going to divide this up and sort of overall manage their enrollment. Uh, so an enterprise enrollment can be subdivided into departments. Uh, we're going to uh, have a lot of slides that cover this, so uh, hold, hold, uh, or stick with me here, uh, and hopefully this will become more clear as we move along. So there are these ideas of departments. Uh, there are accounts or account owners. Uh, these are the basically the super users in the Azure hierarchy, uh, and each account owner can then create subscriptions. And subscriptions are where you actually deploy resources in Azure. So uh, this is what you know, the options are you can create this tree-like structure and assign different departments uh, for different uh, autonomous groups if you wish. You can assign account owners and then those account owners will create subscriptions. So let's talk about that just a little bit more here. So what is a hierarchy versus a subscription in Azure? Uh, on the left here we're talking about the hierarchy. So the hierarchy is basically uh, the rights to modify the Azure hierarchy itself. Who's going to be able to create departments? who's going to be able to create accounts uh, and subscriptions. Uh, and the key accounts that have access to the hierarchy are the enterprise administrators, department administrators, and account owners. Now on the right we're talking about subscriptions. Uh, and subscriptions are basically uh, where people are given rights to actually create objects, so such as virtual machines or other services. Uh, so totally separate. The left is all about governance. The right is all about deploying resources, okay? And these can be different actors. So you could have different people who are enterprise admins, department admins, and account admins than the people who are actually deploying resources in Azure. But they don't always have to be. In fact, in education, a lot of our customers, uh, you know, maybe the same person is the enterprise admin and the account owners, and they also can deploy resources. So it just depends on how you set up and how you think about your deployment. So, hey, Eric. Yes, David. Yeah, yeah, just one point around the key accounts here. Uh, again, when, when you go through the enrollment, the Azure onboarding, the first accounts that are created are those enterprise admin accounts. Then you talked about identifying a couple of accounts uh, in this scenario. But with those, when you when those enterprise admins log in and are identified, they're the ones that then can create the departments and the department admins and then they can um, also uh, create the account owners that then have access, like you said, to uh, provision subscriptions on the right-hand side. So just you know, for folks to keep that in mind. Yes, and, and as much as we can talk about it, the, the less confusing it will become because this can be confusing. Uh, and so in this example, uh, here on the bottom left, Amy and David from Central IT create a research, a research subscription uh, and then Manuel, John, and Paul for research are assigned as service admins and co-admins to the subscription and they're going to create resources. Okay, so let's just kind of dig into that a little bit deeper here just to make uh, more of an example. Uh, so David and Amy are not researchers. They have no idea what researchers do. Uh, Amy and David are IT people. Uh, but they're going to make sure the researchers have access to their work so the researchers can do their work. Uh, however, Amy and David can also oversee, monitor, and manage uh, this environment uh, like they would anything on premises, uh, but they don't really, they're just providing the infrastructure. Okay, on the right, you have Manuel, John, and Paul. They don't know anything about how Azure is organized. All they want to be able to do is deploy stuff. 
Uh, and so uh, they're going to create research, uh, virtual machines, storage, those sorts of things uh, in the subscription without really an understanding of the greater Azure deployment for the organization. So again, the hierarchy is all about governance and what is being created as a structure to manage and uh, provide access to other users. Uh, and in this case, we are using different actors, but as I said before, it could be the same people that have control across the whole enterprise. Okay, so it depends on what you want to do. All right, so uh, we're going to visit this again in another way because I want to make sure this is understood. So the Azure hierarchy uh, and administrative roles. We talked about the enterprise enrollment. That is a role. There's an enterprise admin who sits at the top of this uh, pyramid uh, and assigns permissions for the rest of this. Uh, the next one is a department. Okay. Uh, a department could be a way to break up entire separate entities in your university uh, or in your uh, school. So it could be, think of this as autonomous groups that want to do their own things in Azure. Okay, uh, Those are optional. They don't have to be there at all. Uh, and then finally you have the account. And account uh, admins are basically the people who create subscriptions. Okay, So as trying to make it clear here, the top three here aren't necessarily creating resources, they're creating a hierarchy uh, and a uh, structure for how resources will be deployed. Uh, where resources are actually deployed are in subscriptions. Okay, And so in, in what we see here in this first example is uh, Joe is an account admin and he's created a production uh, subscription and a dev test subscription. Now we're going to talk about subscriptions in another video, um, but just trying to get the, the infrastructure clear here, or the hierarchy. Hey Eric, uh, one question that I, I typically get is, you know, where's that Azure monetary commit tracked? Um, is, it, is it at the department level? Is it the enterprise agreement level? Where, where, where would customers, yeah, where would they, you know, track that? Okay, good point, because in the last video, if you hadn't seen video number two, we talked about the Azure Monetary Commit. So if you haven't seen that, go back and ch check that out. Uh, basically, the enterprise, uh, the monetary commitment falls at the top of the tree. So if, uh, for example, Contoso put $25,000 into their monetary commit, that $25,000 is going to be available to everything below, okay? Whether they've created multiple departments and multiple accounts, or whether they have no departments and a single account, uh, the funds are at the top of this tree. Uh, the enrollment is where all of the money uh, basically is spent. Uh, so it gets spent across all departments, all subscriptions. So it's a good question. So Eric, could you use departments to break up your billing tracking for like the researchers? Is that why people create departments? Another good question. So absolutely. So uh, if you think about the enterprise portal, what you're going to be able to see as an enterprise admin, you're going to see the total uh, commitment, the total spend you have. You can also, if you create departments, you can uh, basically set it up so that you're understanding the cost that rolls up for each department. So, uh, you know, I want to see how much IT is spending and how much the medical school is spending. I can do that as well. You can finally also understand cost per subscription. Uh, and as we get a little bit deeper into conversations in later videos, you're going to see you can even get much more granular than that. So the funds that are in the enrollment are spread across. I mean, anybody can consume them, but you can also get uh, reporting at each level. So good question. And Eric, and just, just to also clarify, is some, some folks may, may have this idea that uh, you, you you know you have this fund right whether it's twenty five thousand like we mentioned that if you once you reach that limit that services are going to be turned off and just to clarify the, 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 those numbers that monetary commit even even uh, quotas that you can set they're all soft nothing gets turned off uh, with a, with an enterprise agreement, but you can certainly monitor and we'll talk more in details as the video series go on. Absolutely. Uh, and so something else that I want to mention on this slide is that if, if departments, uh, they may or may not be of interest to you. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more in what Contoso decides. But uh, when departments are created, they're often created as functional. Here you can see that we have IT in the medical school. Uh, they could be based on a business division, so uh, you know we have some state universities that have many campuses, uh, so they could have a different campus. 
uh, for each department, or if it's ge geographic, you could have a university that's in the west and the east and break it up that way. Okay, it's all options, it's all decisions you can make. Uh, one thing that we want to make clear is that though you want to keep it simple, and you don't have to make all these decisions up front. Uh, so a lot in a lot of cases, we uh, our our education customers do not create departments; they go straight. Uh, to account owners and subscriptions. So just want to make that clear. All right, we're going to visit this hierarchy one more time just to make it clear uh, what is at each level. Okay, so we mentioned the enterprise enrollment. There is typically one per institution. Now we do have some schools out there that have gone out and gotten many different enrollments. And in some of those cases, they basically rolled up what was in those many enrollments back into a single enrollment because they didn't really understand the Azure structure. Uh, but uh, it is typically one enrollment uh, per institution. Okay. The next thing here is departments. We mentioned it before. We'll mention it again. These are optional. Uh, you do not have to have these, but they can be helpful for rep reporting uh, and understanding costs for different uh, business units or geographies. Uh, again, most of our education customers are not using departments, but definitely some of them are. It depends on, on your needs and how you want to break it out. Uh, and then finally we have subscriptions uh, and subscriptions are created and owned by account owners uh, and it's important to mention and we'll talk about subscriptions a little bit more later on um, they are basically administrative and security boundaries so a, a subscription has its own boundaries in terms of role-based access control who has access to it uh, and uh, how it scales uh, but we'll get into that uh, quite a bit later uh, we also are mentioning resource groups down here below. That is a later topic, but that is another way to further organize and categorize the resources that you actually deploy inside of subscriptions. And Eric, one 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 quick word about resources. I mean, sometimes you know, for those folks that are starting with Azure, you know, again, just just to clarify, resources are just think of you know think of. Um, Whatever you deploy in an Azure subscription, whether it's a virtual machine, whether it's a storage account, it could be a, a network uh, a type of service. Those those are what are considered resources, and of course they could be uh, grouped into what we call resource groups. So, for those of you that may not know, then just just to clarify there. Good point. Thank you. Okay, one more visit to this hierarchy, and then I think we're going to be done with this video. Uh, and in this, in this instance, we're relating the structure and the hierarchy to actual portals that you go to to manage it. Okay, the first one here, the enterprise enrollment. Everything about the enterprise enrollment is managed at the enterprise portal. Uh, so that is at ea.azure.com. This is where you basically um, create departments, department admins, and accounts uh, who later become uh, account owners to create subscriptions. Okay. Uh, the next one here is department administrator. Again, this is optional, but department administrators, they use the same enterprise portal, ea.azure.com, but when they log in, they just have less access, okay? So they create uh, uh, departments, uh, I'm sorry, they create account owners, uh, and they can basically uh, in inactivate them as well, okay? Finally, you have the account owner. Uh, the account owner can go to the enterprise portal and create subscriptions, uh, but they can also now go to portal.azure.com, which is known as the management portal, uh, and create subscriptions there. So uh, account owners create subscriptions, and they typically use two different portals for that. Okay, uh, as an account owner, you wouldn't ever have to go to the EA portal, though. You could just do everything now in uh, portal.azure.com. Hey Eric, uh, one one of the things that you know we sometimes get into calls with customers around, you know, certain. You know, experiences with the account owner versus the enterprise administrator. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the, you know, when you log in as an enterprise administrator, you cannot create uh, the subscription uh, all the way down below. Just with that rule, you always have to create an account owner. And even though it, it, that account owner could be the same as an enterprise administrator, you have to provision that as, as an account owner. Many times we get into calls where the enterprise administrator cannot create a subscription and like they, understand, they don't understand why. Uh, so that's just a, a distinction. You just have to you know, 
uh, be aware of. Good point. So as an enterprise admin, you can't create subscriptions, but you can give yourself the rights to create subscriptions, I think is what you're saying in another way. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. Okay. So this wraps up video number three. Uh, in the next video, we're going to actually do a demo of the enterprise portal uh, and the management portal. So stay tuned. Thank you.